We are back on Auto Show TV and we're here at Anchor Subaru in North Smithfield to talk about the 2016 Outback and the 2016 Forester. Mike Hersey is with us from Anchor Subaru. Is it fair to say that people who are looking at the Outback, I'm sure probably comparing to the Forester and vice versa? Oh, absolutely, yeah. These, these cars have been sisters of each other since the, the late 90s now and that's been the question asked. Which one do I get? Uh, Outback definitely geared more towards entry-level luxury, I'd say. Uh, it's also a little bit wider and a little bit longer than the Forester. Forester wins on height. If you need the extra headroom, this would definitely be the one. Also geared more towards the sport utility side. Uh, not trimmed as nicely as the Outback possibly could be. How about ground clearance? Oh, ground clearance, exactly the same between the two. 8.7 inches on both of them, but you feel like you sit a little bit higher in the Forester uh, compared to the Outback. The Outback's more of a wagon. You feel like you sit in it and everything's kind of around you. Tires? Oh, tires are practically the same, uh, 17 inches on both until you get to the upper trim levels, you can get 18 inches on both. Mike, one of the big differences I see right here between the Forester and the Outback, the roof rails. Absolutely, both come with roof rails. Uh, difference being on the, on the Outback here, it actually contains your crossbars all the time. It's completely standard on every single trim level. All you have to do, lift up on the handle and just drop it in place. And that's it. They tuck back into the roof rails just to get better fuel economy. Yep, and there's some extra positioning, two options, right? Absolutely, up there. this rear bar actually moves back about six inches for, for heavier cargo, and there's four 150 pound tie downs up top, just so you don't have to wrap string all the way around the car anymore. Can you get crossbars on the Forester? Oh, absolutely, it is an extra accessory. You can either get them through Subaru or through an aftermarket. Mike, let's talk about cargo capacity and storage in both the Outback and the Forester. Oh, absolutely, yeah, They're both extremely similar. Again, this being more of a crossover wagon, the Forester being more of a crossover SUV. Uh, they both have just under 35 feet of cargo capacity with the seats up in the back, um, with the seats folded down in both about 75 feet. They're within tenths of an inch of each other. Both can come with this privacy screen for, for your luggage so nobody can look in through your window and see what you have. Both can come with this nice rubberized mat just to contain any kinds of spills or anything. Uh, like I said, both seats fold flat. It's a 60-40 split on both sides and both can actually recline as well. And power liftgate. Power liftgate, absolutely, yeah. That's uh, standard on the Limited. You can get it as an option on the Forester. You can operate it with the remote and it does have a height, a height memory so you don't end up whacking your garage if you, if you park inside. Sure. And both come with the, the rear camera as well that's standard on every single Subaru now. Mike, let's talk about the engines. I see both vehicles have the 2.5 liter four cylinder. Is that what comes standard? Yes, yeah, on, on both of these. The Outback can get up to a six cylinder with 256 horsepower. Uh, the Forester can get a four cylinder turbo. Definitely, again, geared more towards the enthusiast. So you get a turbo option here, a six cylinder option there. Absolutely. How about towing? Oh, good question. Actually, the Outback can tow up to 3,000 pounds with that six cylinder. Uh, the Forester up to 1,500. Mike, let's talk the good stuff. Safety and technology, Absolutely. Subaru, you know, there's a, there's a long list. Absolutely, my favorite stuff. Uh, th these two, along with the rest of Subaru's lineup, of course, top safety picks, five-star crash safety ratings from the IIHS. Uh, this Outback happens to have uh, Subaru's latest and greatest uh, safety achievement, the EyeSight system. Yep. Uh, four pillars being pre-collision throttle management, pre-collision braking, uh, adaptive cruise control, and lane sway warning. Uh, this being the Generation 2 EyeSight that you cannot get in the Forester just yet, also has Lane Keep Assist. If you're falling asleep at the wheel on the highway, it'll actually pull you back into your lane. Very strange to use, uh, but very effective. A lot of technology to keep you out of an accident. If you get in an accident, of course, the safety in, in terms of the integrity of the passenger exactly. compartment, yeah. Yeah. right? Tons of active and, and passive safety features. Uh, both have Subaru's ring reinforced frame. Uh, where if you get in a side collision, it transfers that energy into the rings where they're supposed to be. If you get in a front end collision, the engine will dive underneath the car, the drive shaft is meant to break in half, uh, the pedals go up into the dash, the steering wheel goes off to the side, all these things working together to make sure nothing hits you at the end of the day. Mike, this is good stuff, but I'm sure some of our viewers are still like, I still can't decide which one, what do you say? That, that, that is the age old question. I've owned both. There's a reason Super still makes both of these, despite of how similar they are. Uh, you, you can look up reviews all day. You have to come and try them. You, you have to. It's that last 5% that's all about personal feel. Here at Anchor Subaru. Here at Anchor Subaru, we have the best selection around. We've been doing this for 20 years. We're a family-owned dealership. We have a lifetime warranty on our vehicles. I can't think of a reason not to. Come on down.